It sure feels like 1911 season, doesn't it? In from Century Arms, we have an affordable option, the Centurion 11. Coming up next, we'll show you what's in the box. We'll take a look at some notes from the manual, fit, finish, and feature, do some trigger talk, field strip it, check for chamber support, and talk about what'll be in the range video. Coming up next on GB Guns. Uh, this one is Tia's. It was literally just handed to me five minutes ago. So let's do this together. <laughs> Fear not, I've done a few hundred guns, so I feel confident uh, in doing this. Up top, we have a bore mop, a bore brush, and a cleaning rod that is polymer. Also a slot, mate, nope, that's just the dent from the other one. That was a slot for an additional magazine. Got our manual, the tag that Century Arms uses. Uh, having visited Century's <laughs> um, warehouse, I've seen these tags everywhere and how they use them. It's a pretty smart system for a company that deals with as many different firearms as Century Arms has. We have one included magazine. I do not see markings on it, but man, this looks really familiar. It's an eight round um, 45, of course. This is a 45 ACP, but uh, this make, mag make and style looks very familiar to me. If you can identify it, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, I wish 1911 mag makers would stamp their names on stuff. Take the pistol out, nice and clean. Came with a nice, durable chamber flag. I know people mock this stuff, but if you've ever been to a range that requires chamber flags, it's nice to have one that is durable. I'll take a quick look at the manual and we'll get this stuff out of the way and then look at the gun. I know some folks like to skip past this part. I took a look at the manual, one, to make sure that I'm gonna do everything exactly as the manual says, two, to show YouTube that me field stripping is not gunsmithing or doing any assembly or disassembly or anything like that, it's basic safety. And three, as an indicator of how much the company cares about you, the consumer. Uh, a well done manual will tell you a lot. A poorly done manual won't tell you much. I can say flipping through this, it's a pretty nice one. Uh, not only do we have more parts identified than the average person needs to be concerned with, but we've got full color photos. The instructions are nice and clear and it's written and stylized in a way that I think would be great for new shooters. Uh, which, considering this is a very affordable classic firearm, it makes a lot of sense. Including the field stripping, there you go YouTube moderator, you can see how it's done there. I will be doing the same thing to show folks what this gun <laughs> looks like. Um, but nicely done manual, uh, no crazy notes, there's the specs. You can pause here or check the pinned comment over at gbgunsdepot.com. We'll have the full review with all of the specs and that information on there. Uh, let me get this out of the way and we'll take a look at the pistol. There we are, 123 years later, it's still a handsome design, isn't it? Now the Centurion 11 is a basic 1911 design. I say basic in that you have the uh, simple blade front sight. We don't have checkering on the front step strap. We've got the slightly rounded mainspring housing, uh, the classic hammer, smaller beaver tail, and it's chambered in 45. This is a cool piece to have if you want a basic classic 1911 without spending a ton of money. Now these are imported from Turkey, produced by Alf Arms, which is kind of like Alpha Arms but minus an A, a company I had not heard of before. I think it feels pretty smooth. Let's check for our magazine ejection or release. And that of course is done with the slide lock to the rear we've already shown clear. Flipping the gun upside down, does it kick it or just let it go? Oh, it definitely kicks it. We've got some positive ejection there, which is nice. And uh, man, overall very clean. Let's go fit, finish, and features. I'm not feeling the typical sharp edges that you get on um, a lower grade build, like a Colt or something like that. Uh, everything feels fairly smooth around those edges. But uh, coming up front, you can see we have a bushing system. More on that during the field stripping. Very classic. Of course, no rail slots, no texture on the front of the trigger guard. The small blade front sight. Smooth front strap, as we mentioned before. Some slight beveling of the magazine well. If you want to get good at reloads, shoot a single stack for a while. Not only do you have to reload more often, but you've got to get a skinny mag into a skinny gun. Grips are plastic, that's easily swapped. Mainspring housing does have some vertical serrations to help with side to side shift. I'd prefer if they're horizontal since typically the gun is trying to rotate in your hands. You can see our slide to frame fit. Actually looks pretty tight. 
very smoothly done. I've never understood why some companies can't pull that off. It's not that hard to run a grinding wheel over the slide frame after the two are paired. See our sight picture there, very narrow front sight blade and a narrow notch rear classic. It will be a challenge for aging eyes. And our slide serrations have good grip and are only in the rear and only where they classically have been. It is a classic 1911. Speaking of time for controversy, let's field strip this thing. There's more than one way to do this. I've always followed what's ever in the manual and I've always cut hell from it from whoever does it the other way. <laughs> you can take the slide off and then get the slide or you can take the spring out first. The manual says spring out first, so that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to push down on this plunger and rotate this bushing. And I always forget which way it has to turn until it just works. Apparently left is the way. You wanna make sure to be careful with that because it is under pressure. Pull your spring out, it, unless it's stuck on the guide rod, which it is in this case. So now we'll bring our slide back until the little cutout is above That notch, sorry about the white balance here. Let me try something real quick. So by that guys, I'm trying out a new lighting setup and uh, in an attempt to get you guys a better shots, ended up with poor lighting. So a little notch over there and then we're gonna push on the other side of the slide stop. This can be tight on some guns, not on this one, it's coming out nice and easy. And then our slide can come off the frame, unless you were like me and you tugged and wedged the uh, guide rod out of the way. I'm gonna give this a quick whack on the back. After some taps on the back of the slide here, it got everything free. Now we can get our guide rod out the back since that spring does not want to come off. It is a short guide rod. Some folks prefer and swear by full length guide rods in the 1911s. I do believe that was once an issue of springs binding and things like that. I have never experienced it and never seen a reason to not run a shorter guide rod it does make disassembly reassembly much easier. Now to get our barrel free, we'll turn the bushing the other direction. It'll unlock, you can see there's a little notch on there. That notch has to clear the opening of the slide. Make sure this link is forward and our barrel can come out the front. If you look inside the slide, it is a 70 series, meaning that there is no safety plunger in here. Some of the purists prefer that. Some folks say it makes for a better trigger. I could see that as a potential. I've shot plenty of 80 series that had good sugars and 70 series that did not. How is this one fair? We'll find out when we get it all back together. This gives you a look at our frame. All pretty clean and classic. Uh, builds like these are fun because it one teaches you to appreciate and understand what's in the uh, what a modern one does and what the differences are. These are also great for project guns, especially when the pistol is affordable enough that you don't have to cry about it if uh, you mess something up or have difficulties. But the good news is the 1911 has been around so long that uh, you really can't mess up too much because chances are there's somebody out there who has a solution for you and knows it. Um, as I reassemble this, I'll tell you about what you'll see in the range video. You'll see absolute first shots through the gun right no preps no warm-ups um, we will do full magazine plus one see how it runs fully stuffed try some other 1911 magazines since each there's a lot of 1911 magazine makers out there and I've found that just because brand X works well in one gun doesn't mean it does in another All right now as I've reassembled through that hole you want to make sure that little link is visible through there and get your pin started without pushing down too far. And now move your slide back until that notch we saw before is lined up above and push through. There we go. Now everything should be back together, except we've got to get that uh, plunger bit back in. Fighting against spring pressure, this can take a little bit of pushing. Oh, let's get the uh, bushing turned far enough. And once that's in, turn the bushing to lock it in place again. After we've done all that, we'll take it to our trademark what's for dinner test, see what the gun eats. Uh, that'll be 10 additional loads. 
1911s, some people say are picky on ammo. I've seen evidence that confirms that. I've seen evidence that denies that. What will this be? We'll find out. We'll also take it to the spinner for sights and trigger control, do some practical accuracy, and then give you the final thoughts on the Centurion 11. Now that everything's back together, let's do some trigger talk. You have a flat grip safety, no enlargement there, so you have to have a good grip on it. Very short take up, good break. Pull weight is average. Reset takes you right back to the wall. It is a nice crisp 1911 trigger. Not the fanciest thing out there, but um, certainly better than a lot of others. Done uh, over a hundred 1911 videos by this point. <laughs> Check out the playlist if you want to see those. Um, looking forward to shooting this one, getting some classic time done. We'll see you guys out on the range. Once again, check the pinned comment if you want to see any more specs or details. And thanks for watching.